my association with the radio goes to some six decades uh for the first time that i made a broadcast was when i was in my b and uh, there was a university competition uh, amongst various colleges so my college sent me as their representative and i uh, made my uh, speech there after the speech the program executive asked me whether i would like to take part in plays i said very, very eagerly i said yes certainly why not so then he gave me an audition and said you are okay and then we will be sending your contract i used to stay uh, in husharpur which is about 25 miles from jalandhar which is which had the radio station in punjab so um, one day i got a letter from all in the radio ask me to come and uh, said the program will be the play will be broadcast on so and so date and uh, it indicated the amount of 15 rupees as my fees or well, it it was quite a exciting thing to have 15 rupees uh, for your program which wasn't um, my my part wasn't even 2 or 3 minutes so after that i started getting uh, the contacts quite regularly maybe once in 2 months or 3 months and um, it used to cost me something like 2 rupees by bus to go 2 rupees by bus to come back and um, 1 rupee for my miscellaneous expenses so the net saving was 10 rupees but more than that it was the excitement of uh, speaking and then people telling you oh we heard you last night or uh, something of that type so this was very interesting after that i uh, got into ias and uh, then i was in delhi under training then i was in the district here and uh, then in about uh, 58 end i landed in hyderabad so hyderabad had a different uh, sort of uh, ambience different uh, type of uh, entire uh, setup here and there was a radio station here so i contacted the radio station and told them that uh, i used to be uh, taking part in uh, plays etc and is there any scope for my resuming my ties uh, the um, uh, program executive said uh, uh, you are uh, now in ias and uh, in the plays we get all sorts of people and uh, Uh, you may not be easy mixing with them but if you can write something like stories or talks or something then uh, it will be good for you so i said yes i i had done it something earlier in my college days i was uh, contributing articles to the tribune uh, newspaper and uh, so i said yes so after that i started uh, giving talks um, it started in urdu then it went to english and then to hindi and then i think there is some sort of uh, restriction on the radio not to give anybody uh, more programs than once in two or three months so uh, it came like that and i kept on uh doing that and i think uh, uh ever since after that i was transferred to delhi and even in delhi i continu- continued wherever i went um, i was asked to record a talk even for a short visit if i went and they came to know or sometime the uh, people in uh, hyderabad station told them that uh, he is coming and uh, if you'd like to uh, uh, record a talk or something or an interview 
whatever. So I can say now that for the last six decades, I have uh, been a regular broadcaster and uh, also telecaster since television came uh, on the scene. Now, uh, I have learned two things from these radio talks. One is brevity. You have to have a talk for 10 minutes. And I uh, used all sorts of uh, things. I, I recorded at home and then uh, checked with my watch. And then I, had a st I got a stopwatch to see how much time I take. And then various things. So that very, very seldom there was a problem of uh, overrun on time. So that helped me in other things also. Uh, other writings that uh, in 10 minutes you can say a lot of things. And the value of a second, uh, I learned only after coming here that every second matters. The other was discipline. Uh, uh, I call it external discipline. The radio or television, they sent you a contract saying your talk will be recorded on so-and-so date at so-and-so time. So you are bound to that. And I have never, never defaulted on that. Never. Sometime there was a default on the other side. Those people rang me up and said, there's some problem and can you make it uh, some other time? Okay. But I never default. So this sort of thing then helped me in my other writings that you have to sit down and finish the job by so-and-so time. Uh, uh, I, I say that, that because external discipline uh, works with people or persons whose uh, level of evolution is a little low. Internal discipline works on people who have evolved. So before you get evolved, you, it is good to have external discipline. And I think these are the two great virtues I learned. And I've never, even for magazines and newspapers and other uh, um, uh, media, if they set a time, uh, I, I nev have never... Um, uh, defaulted on that or gone beyond that. Uh, sometimes the magazines remind me um, 15 days or 20 days before the due date just to remind you. I said, you don't have to remind me. It is in my diary and you will get it on time. And uh, this I attribute to the um, uh, discipline which I uh, learned from uh, being with the uh, AIR and uh, uh, Doordarshan. Another interesting point is that from 15 rupees, I went to 25, from 25 to 50, and uh, gradually, which was a miserable amount. So when Dr. B. Gopal Reddy, who was Information and Broadcasting Minister, he was very fond of me, and um, he came here after becoming a minister and they had a meeting with journalists and others and so on. So there I raised the point. I said, sir, this 25 rupees payment is uh, very uh, miserable and it is a affront to one's dignity that you write uh, for 25 rupees. He says, but look at the reach that you get. I said, I don't know about the reach because there is no uh, testing for that. But I know that if I send anything which I write to, for the uh, All India Radio, if I send the same thing elsewhere, I'll get at least 300 rupees in those days. So he says, um, uh, no, no, you know, uh, things are difficult and so on. But I knew that he had made a mental note of it. So after he went back, the amount increased, I think, to 75 rupees or so. And since then, uh, I think in uh, 
Gill's time, when Gill was Information and Broadcasting uh, Secretary, he increased significantly, I think, to, to 375 or so. And now I think it stands at 500 rupees, which is still very, very low, but um, it's not so uh, demeaning. Uh, when I go home and uh, my wife sees a check, he says, 500 rupees, and you have... Uh, spend so much time uh, writing and going there and coming and this and that. So I said, well, it's, it's something, um, even if one is not paid, it's a thing which I like to do and uh, I continue doing. So uh, this has been an interesting association and when I started that, I didn't know that uh, um, it will last. Also, uh, if I uh, hadn't come to Hyderabad, which means if Andhra Pradesh had not been formed, uh, I wouldn't have got this thing because then there would have been probably a, a radio station in Karnool <laughs> and, and the programs would have been different. So there are things in, in life which happen and uh, uh, they determine how one proceeds. Uh, while I'm talking about radio, I, I can't help going to back in uh, memory and also history to recount about the Deccan radio, out of which the Hyderabad station of All India Radio evolved. Deccan radio was set up by a person called Mehbubali in 1932. It was a private company, and I believe some sort of assistance was given from the government for doing that. Nizam, the uh, Mahbubali was uh, staying in uh, Chiragali Lane, which is not far from the radio station here, and he had the uh, station also there. Most of his family members were the participants. They did different programs. Uh, at the time of the starting of the war or around that, I'm not sure of the date, this was taken over by government. And then it became a regular department of uh, the government of uh, Hyderabad. Uh, there was the... Uh, Fazlur Rahman was the first director of... Uh, all India of uh, the Deccan Radio. And then uh, some other directors came. Uh, I m had met Hamiduddin Ahmad uh, after he had ceased to be a director, and he was the last director of uh, Radio Deccan. Radio Deccan, of course, for obvious reasons, was predominantly. Uh, uh, give, uh, had programs in Urdu. And, of course, there were other languages like uh, Telugu and uh, Kannada and Marathi and English, but predominance of uh, content was in Urdu. And uh, some uh, well-known names of that period uh, are Zafarul Hassan, uh, uh, Mirza Hassan and uh, Mir Hassan and uh, so on. One of the imp important names was uh, Ibrahim Jalis, who was a good writer. He went away to Pakistan and uh, died there. Uh, on the uh, collapse of Hyderabad in 1948, uh, Zafarul Hassan uh, was uh, an assistant director and he was summoned by the uh, Director General of Police, Nawab Deen Yar Jang. And uh, on the 17th of September, 1948, 
and uh, was told to stop broadcasting programs and start playing music. Before that, Qasim Razvi, the Razakar leader, had come to the radio station and said, I want to make a broadcast uh, because there are rumors that I have run away to Pakistan and I want to assure people that I'll be here. I won't do that. There was some problem about allowing him just like that and the, uh, the question went up to the Prime Minister likely likely gave the clearance and um, Qasim Razi made a speech uh, beginning rather uh, in a hostile manner but later on he said uh, it is perhaps the will of God we will we have fought bravely but we have lost and I assure you that I will not and go anywhere, I'll be with you till the last moment of my life. So, uh, then when Zafr al Hassan was asked to uh, stop the broadcast and uh, make uh, and put on the music there, uh, he uh, put on this uh, couplet of a poet uh, Saqib Laknavi Zamana bade shauk se sun raha tha hami keh gaye daastan kehte kehte that is the world was listening with great uh, interest but we went off to sleep while narrating our story after that, uh, Meera's song, Bad uh, Ghungaru Band Meera Nachi, sung by M.S. Subhalakshmi, was broadcast. And people who are listening came to know that the game of independence of Hyderabad is over now. At the same time, there was a station in Aurangabad and uh, uh, before even Hyderabad radio uh, station made this broadcast, from Arangabad, a, a news item came, this is All India Radio, Arangabad. That was a hint or a subtle announcement that uh, already Arangabad had fallen. Another interesting thing is about the Nizam and the radio. Now, Nizam, as you know, was the richest man of his time. But you'll be surprised to know that he did not have a radio in his palace. So when, before uh, police action, Nehru made a broadcast from Delhi, a message came, came from the King Koti, where Nizam used to stay, that uh, please send a, a radio uh, receiving set to the palace. So that was placed there and Nizam sat in front of it to listen to Nehru's speech. When Nehru's speech came on the air, the Nizam got up and went all around the uh, radio set and he said, where is he sitting? Where is he speaking from? Now this is such a surprising thing as I said, the richest man in the world uh, did not have a radio when uh, poor people like us, and we knew about um, where one speaks from and uh, how the um, recording comes. So, uh, on the 17th of September 1948, when truce had been entered into and Nizam declared that he had asked his uh, uh, cabinet to resign and um, he had surrendered. The uh, India's agent general was K.M. Munshi. So he suggested to him 
to make a broadcast. Uh, he wrote the speech for him. But uh, Nizam said, how does one broadcast? He was very nervous about it. He said, it's very simple. You sit in front of a, a, a mic and then start speaking. So he came to the radio station here and um, made his speech. And that was also the first experience for him. Uh, radio Deccan uh, lasted about 16 years. And now, and after that, it became part of, uh, it became All India Radio. Then now, um, the Prasar Bharti, in, you know the uh, present situation. Uh, I have had the pleasure of uh, coming here at uh, different stages when there was only one building, uh, the front building, and then gradually there were other rooms added. And now you have studios here. And uh, there's a feeling that probably this building also is not uh, enough and you have to expand. So I have um, uh, had a long association and uh, I must say that I've cherished it and I have learned a lot of uh, things and I have made a lot of friends. Even today when I uh, have, um, my broadcast is, has been made, uh, when I go home the next morning, at least two or three persons ring me up and say, we heard you last night. I thought uh, nobody heard the radio now. After the television came, everybody is hooked on to television and nobody came, would uh, bother about it. But I f find from these... Uh, this sort of feedback that uh, radio is still a force to reckon with and its uh, reach is vast and the programs, if they are good, they are heard and appreciated. So when I started uh, uh, broadcasting uh, more or less regularly, uh, I, we didn't have a radio, so uh, we, for listening to, for the family uh, particularly, for listening to the broadcast, one had to go to the neighbor's house. So uh, my parents felt that it was uh, rather odd that uh, our son goes for uh, recording and we don't have a radio. So I remember they uh, invested about 300 rupees uh, on a radio set. I think it was a Tesla brand. I still remember the name. And uh, a very beautiful thing to look at. That was a time in, uh, during which uh, people used to put radio st their radio set in the drawing room because it was... Uh, not only a useful device to listen to music and uh, song and uh, news, but also to display to the guests that we have this. Just as uh, you, when, when refrigerators came into our life, people put the refrigerators not in the kitchen, but in the drawing room. So I think there is a phase always, that whenever there is a new you know, invention or introduction of uh, something, uh, some other gadget, you want to uh, put it somewhere where people can notice. Uh, there are people even now who carry their cell phones in their hands <laughs> rather than putting in their back pocket or uh, onto the belt because there is a phase always in everything to show off and then now that uh, uh, everyone has a cell phone uh, there's no point in uh, trying to hint in your conversation or social interaction that you have a cell phone. Now uh, something about uh, how 
uh, times have changed and um, uh, how that change has been reflected uh, in the media. There was a time when there was no question of media, there was only one medium, that is radio. Later on, uh, we had uh, gradual expansion of the uh, media. And uh, even now, for example, you hear that uh, so-and-so held a press conference. I don't know why they don't call it media conference, because now press is uh, uh, a small fraction of the electronic uh, media. And uh, you see uh, anywhere, if there is, there are two or three you know, people from the press, there are 10 or 15 people with uh, mics in their hand and uh, uh, cameramen uh, in, uh, with their big cameras and trying to shoot the pro programs. So uh, now we live in the age of media and uh, almost nothing goes unnoticed, which is in a way a good thing because when you, we say that uh, media reflects uh, society, media also uh, keeps an eye on what is going wrong and where. So, so many of these uh, scams which have come out uh, lately have been detected and investigated by the media. Earlier, newspaper journalism was the main thing. And uh, I remember some of the earlier uh, scandals, like uh, the Mundra scandal in which T.T. Krishnamchari lost his job. You know, only newspapers. The radio never mentioned it, partly because it was uh, a government organ. So now that picture has changed. But there's one thing now that uh, uh, there are so many uh, channels and so many programs that uh, uh, one tends to uh, select a favorite and that is done after some uh, period of trial and error. You know now uh, which channel is affiliated to which newspaper and which uh, uh, media baron. And so you will have the news accordingly, uh, according to what suits that particular uh, channel and the particular person who uh, holds that. Uh, earlier, we used to listen to radio um, for uh, reliability. But the reliability became a little suspect after um, uh, people started feeling that uh, radio gives only one-sided version, the government version and not the real version. And now, of course, you get um, various versions and you can draw your own conclusions. Sometimes it is very confusing. BBC, for example, is very popular still. We listen to BBC once a day at least to know what is happening. And um, that sort of uh, uh, reliability, that sort of uh, credibility, and that sort of range of programs, um, I think it's, it's the ideal towards which we should uh, aspire. They, they have a variety of programs on history, on culture, on civilization, on education, on whatever you have. And uh, later on they make um, CDs or DVDs of those programs. Um, now that sort of thing should also be done by our Prasar uh, Bharti uh, because there are programs which uh, need to be preserved. 
I think some sort of uh, thing has been done already in preserving the music of uh, old masters, classical music, and also in preserving the uh, talks and uh, other programs which have some uh, value which is more than passing interest. That should also, uh, that has been done and I think it should be done on a bigger scale. Uh, that is something which uh, I uh, am looking for. That if you ask something, it should become a source of uh, information and knowledge, like archives, archives of the state government or the central government, have uh, all the records uh, for the uh, since centuries ago. It's not uh, only now or 10 years or something. Uh, for centuries you can get, get the record. Similarly, the uh, archives of uh, radio and uh, television should uh, go back and uh, try to recover some of those programs and keep uh, a good uh, archival record of the current programs also. I have seen um, days from uh, one uh, radio, one medium called radio apart from newspapers, and uh, uh, we were, uh, one doesn't know when one is living in a particular situation that there are uh, better situations possible. And as things get invented, particularly in the field of uh, uh, the media, the uh, expectation keep on increasing. Now, there was a um, IT revolution which uh, we experienced some years ago. And now the same revolution or a similar revolution is coming through the cell phones and I think the uh, it is a same version of IT but the medium is now the cell phone and not the earlier medium and I think we will we already have actually my children have, have my grandchildren have uh, cell phones which are superior to mine and they can hear um, television program, radio program, whatever they want to hear, not only of India, but even from abroad. So that only means that um, there is never an end to this sort of thing. Life goes on evolving, things go on getting invented, new discoveries are made, and um, people like me who grow who have grown old, we feel very confused. By the time I'm comfortable with one type of, uh, uh, let us say, computer or a cell phone, others come and uh, I'm told, why don't you change? Well, I haven't even uh, started feeling at home with the first one. And it's not easy to change. But that's how life is, and uh, human beings come and go. But these things keep on evolving, and there are always new generations who will enjoy these sort of things.